What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. We got to go over the whole crypto market today because everything's going crazy right now. But before we get to that, please hit the like button and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section because it helps out the channel a lot. And also check out the links in the description for free stock with Robinhood, Webull, and Public.com. Get that free money. You can also get uh, crypto on public or not public, but you know, Webull and Robinhood. So definitely get that crypto on Robinhood and Webull. And also you can just take those stocks and put it directly into the Robinhood and Webull. Take that money and put it straight in there. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, whatever you want to do. But anyways, let's go over to crypto market. So the first thing that we see today, $43,000 with Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin was already at 44000 like 44800 you know, 44800 something around there. Almost 45000 though. But as you can see here, Ethereum down to 2900 Ethereum was pushing almost 3300 or something like that. Yeah, Ethereum was going crazy earlier. Everything was going crazy. Then everything just started to drop. But why did it start to drop? It's because the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt started setting in and the whales started selling out because, you know, that's really what happens all the time. The FUD and then the whales combined just makes a little bit of a sell off. But we're going to go over some of that FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and then some of the FOMO that is actually going into the market right now. Because when we had this huge jump, like Bitcoin all the way from $30,000 all the way up to $44,000, that was a FOMO right there. And people were FOMOing in. But then all this stuff with the SEC and the regulations, yeah, that's what's causing all this FUD. We're going to go over that, though. All right. So the first thing I want to go over, how two competing cryptocurrency policies begin a conversation on digital rights. So this is one of the things I was talking about. Look, Senate deliberations continued over the weekend over a $1 trillion infrastructure bill with a particular focus on how the bill could impact the world of cryptocurrency. The infrastructure bill known as the HR3684, sounds like R2D2 or something like that, allocates money to build roads, bridges, transportation systems, and support clean energy, among other developments. The bill includes a tax provision that outlines plans to raise about $28 billion for that $1 trillion package through taxes from crypto transactions. So they're really trying to tax the crypto like huge just so then they can do all these different infrastructure things and pay. Don't know why they don't just print the money like they've always been doing, even though they're still printing money. Literally, they're still printing money, yet they're still going to try to tax people with this crypto for their infrastructure bill. But they already have money that they printed for our infrastructure bill multiple times. You see how that's kind of fishy, right? But anyways, as we know, cryptocurrency is a digital asset that more and more people are investigating in. We should want that to continue and continue in a healthy and sustainable way. But obviously, it's not going to be healthy and sustainable if they keep putting regulations on it and taxes. So anyways, that's what Rob Portman said. So during Sunday's Senate session, that's what he said. The Portman, along with other senators, proposed an amendment to the bill's cryptocurrency tax provision in order to quell concerns over digital rights. However, Portman's was the second proposed amendment and that dealt with this concern. So the two competing amendments illuminate the concerns of those in the crypto space who are particularly unhappy with one word in the key tax provision broker so cryptocurrency investors are unhappy with the new tax provision everyone's unhappy with it i mean jack dorsey he was talking about it you know uh charles hawkinson he was talking about it jack dorsey is the ceo of twitter charles hawkinson is ceo of cardano creator of condado founder and then we also have elon musk he was talking about it too we all know who elon musk is so i don't even gotta explain that but anyways let's keep going so the bill identifies a broker as anyone responsible for it and regularly providing any service effectuating transfers of digital assets on behalf of another person. So, and anyone thus identified would be subject to tax reporting requirements. That appears to include people like miners who use a proof of work system by solving algorithms with computer software that, if correct, serve as a verification for crypto transactions. So miners don't have customers, so they wouldn't be able to get access to the information necessary to complete a 1099 tax form, something the provision requires brokers to to submit but hmm, how are miners going to do that if they don't have customers who are that who are their customers right you want to know who their customers are uh i guess you can say the government you know but then we're gonna have to tax the government that'd be good right but anyways we got a lot of you know stuff going on here it really sucks what's happening hopefully we don't get these bad regulations on us but it's, it's probably gonna happen let's be honest it'll probably happen to an extent but anyways Brokers must also submit reports of any transactions over $10,000 to the Eternal Revenue Service to IRS, which was already required of them before the bill was proposed. So digital rights nonprofit, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, believes such requirements are also an issue of privacy. So I do believe that, too. 
But um, this just sucks what they're trying to do to us. It says over here, cryptocurrencies, decentralized finance system and its blockchain transactions don't tie information to an individual, but rather to the series of transactions that came before. Thus, cryptocurrency markets do not easily allow for the collection and reporting of information on users. That's 100 percent true. I mean, like, look, I've used Binance. I've used uh, Voyager. I've used Robinhood. I've used Webull. Um, I've used so many different platforms, BlockFi, Blockfolio, like, um, what's the other one? Qcoin, like Qcoin is a Chinese company. How am I going to get my tax information from Qcoin? I've already distributed like thousands of dollars to them. How do I get that tax information from them? So this is crazy because like they're putting these regulations on us yet. We can't follow through them because it's just crypto is not built that way. It's not built to have these kind of taxes inside of it. Like there's so many different tri crypto transactions. What about the people that you know, transfer their crypto from an exchange over to their hardware wallet. How is that going to go? Like, it's just so much stuff with this that they just, there's just so many holes in their plan, so many holes inside this infrastructure bill. But anyways, let's move on to the next thing. That's one of the, uh, one of the FUD that's going on, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So the next thing we have billionaire hedge fund manager, Ray Dalio, still concerned government could outlaw cryptocurrency. So yeah, that's happening right now. But anyways, Ray Dalio worried about government outlawing cryptocurrencies. Bridgewater Associates founder Ray Dalio is still concerned that governments may outlaw crypto. Dalio now serves as the firm's chairman. Blah, blah, blah. Dalio voiced his concern in an interview with CNBC. And he said a reasonable chance that cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, could eventually be outlawed by the federal government. So he pointed to the time when President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Gold Reserve Act in 1934, transferring all of the country's privately held gold titles and and certificates to the U.S. Treasury as an example. So the execute as the ex the executive previously explained that any major economic downturn or inflationary event could prompt governments to take similar actions on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Hopefully, they don't do this. But I mean, anything can happen. It's the government. Like at this point, anything that benefits them, they're gonna do. And anything that doesn't benefit us, they're probably going to do that too. So that's just how I see it. But anyways, let's move on. How governments mining Bitcoin could de-risk cryptocurrency. So this is another way we could combat this. You know, they could mine Bitcoin and leave us alone. You know, they already got their own profit. But yet again, they just want to make, you know, these profits off cryptos. They claim that they're trying to save people and that they're trying to help people. But how are you going to save someone from themselves when they don't want to be saved? You know, that's kind of a, a big issue right here. Like people just want to invest inside of crypto and have it inside of their own little wallet. They don't want the government being just dipping into everything, ha making them have to file it for taxes after $10,000, which we already have to do, which is kind of stupid that we have to do taxes for crypto. That's just, that's a, that's a whole nother thing. Because if you think about it, crypto is peer to peer transactions. I'm not buying an actual like product right here. Like I'm putting money into a digital asset and then you're putting money to a digital asset and then it sends up the price of the digital asset. I sell out of the digital asset, then the money that you just put in, I just took out. So honestly, it's just transferring money from hand to hand to hand. It's already been taxed. All the money that's inside of crypto right now has already been taxed and it's being taxed. So that's why I just don't understand it. Like I pay, you know, let's just say I pay $30,000 on my $100,000. Now I have $70,000. I take that $70,000 and put it in crypto, but I've already been taxed. And yes, we can get, you know, you know, they're going to talk about only the capital gains, right? But the capital gains are the gains that I'm getting from other people putting the money into crypto. You know, it's really different with stocks because stocks are actual assets, you know, and I'm not saying that crypto isn't actual assets, but uh, let's just be honest. It's a digital asset and I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into all that. Let's keep going with this, but let's move on. So there's seemingly a constant conversation, particularly with those involved in legacy are the legacy financial institutions about how cryptocurrency can be to a certain degree de-risked. So, and they're saying that it could be de-risked by the government mining it. Now, will the government actually mine crypto? We don't know. But anyways, it says government bodies are always looking to get a piece of the pie. Like I said, they see us making money. They want a piece of that. So they're going to take it away. They see someone else making money, a business. They're going to try to take that away too. Like that's just what they do. Think of the government as, um, you know, think of them as gangs. You know, you got the Republicans, you got the Democrats. You can call them the Republicans and the Democrats, like YG called them. So, you know, they're, they're the gangs. You know, they're the largest gang inside the United States. Let's just be completely honest here. Government mining, is it feasible? Feasibly is, of course, feasibility is, of course, the first question that comes to mind. Would government's body, would governmental bodies have the capacity and know-how to truly execute crypto mining? 
No, the government will not know how to do it, but they will hire someone. They're going to hire new people in the government for mining and crypto management. You know, it's what it's what they will always do. You know, it's what companies do. Companies don't understand crypto, but they hire people that understand crypto. You know, just like Amazon just now hired a crypto analyst. So that's what's going to happen inside the future. But anyways, let's move on to that next thing. So the next thing that we have inside crypto, the town of Messina agrees to 90 day moratorium on future cryptocurrency mining operations. And if you don't know what Messina, we are about to find out what Messina is. It's a town in New York state. So this is Messina. We can look at it on the Google Maps image here. And yeah, this is Messina. I didn't even know this place existed, but it's right at the borderline of Canada over here. So yeah, shout out to Messina. But yeah, now they're doing some huge regulations here. Let's go over what they're doing because it's crazy. If you don't know what a moratorium is, look at what the, look at this. A moratorium is a delay or suspension of an activity or law. So pretty much delaying the use of um, the use of crypto mining operations. So a 90 day delay that sucks. It says the Messina Town Council has officially placed a 90 day moratorium on future cryptocurrency mining operations in the town. But some current operations shared their concerns that the moratorium would also impact them. So he said they said over here, I had received some correspondence from a representative of the North Country the North Country Data Center who indicated they had a little bit of a concern about the language of the moratorium because it seemed to ban all cryptocurrency mining, not just ones going forward, but those that are currently existing. So that really does suck. They have these actual mining operations out there, and now they're halted by that because at first they were just going to stop people from doing the crypto mining, like going into it, but now they're stopping people who are already doing it. So it's going to mess up their businesses. This is really stupid here. But anyways, the law notes that the town desires to enact a moratorium on all cryptocurrency mining operations. So this really, this is just terrible. So many, so many different regulations left and right. Like this is the FUD that we're talking about. The fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's going to drive crypto down to the ground. I just hope that it doesn't, you know, destroy crypto. I hope crypto doesn't bottom out. I hope that it doesn't get banned in the U.S., I don't believe it will get banned in the U.S. because they can make way too much money off it. And if the government sees an opportunity to make money, they're going to take that opportunity, which is really, really stupid because the Federal Reserve prints money. But isn't the Federal Reserve separate from the government? Yet when Biden wants to print money, he goes to the Federal Reserve and he basically does it himself. So are they really separate from the government? You know, that's a real question that we need to be asking. Why? I have so many questions before the government. I don't even want to. I'm going to make a whole nother video about this. Like, why do you tax the people when you can create the money that you're taxing us on? Literally, you're taxing us, but yet you create the same thing that you're taxing us on. It's it's such a scam, and it, it keeps people inside of this herd mentality. Like, I don't know. It, it's crazy. I, I, I'll do a whole video on that. I just don't understand the whole, the whole tax thing. But uh, let's move on. The moratorium is a pretty straightforward procedure. The language is relatively clear. The idea is that we place a moratorium on any further cryptocurrency mining development while we get some regulations in place that will govern those types of facilities so the planning board had indicated and i agreed that the code lacked any real regulatory scheme for these types of facilities within the town um but anyways this is all i got for this this is stupid you know more fud if you're uncertainty out inside the market and what do you know you get some more fud left and right but anyways new bill in ukraine to allow payments in cryptocurrency so i guess here's a little bit of fomo for you guys not even fomo but here's a little bit of good news right so anyways the ukraine now to accept crypto payments that's pretty cool there a new cryptocurrency related bill in ukraine will allow payments in cryptocurrency like bitcoin despite not recognizing crypto as a legal tender so deputy minister of ukraine's ministry of digital transformation I can't even say that word is confident that it would be quite legal to pay with cryptocurrencies as they say so cool news they're doing that out there shout out to ukraine they're doing it good but anyways us charges crypto executives for the first time amid larger scrutiny so let's read about this as the us goes after the unregulated cryptocurrency markets the sec has for the first time charged two crypto mining industry executives of illegally selling over 30 million dollars of securities in unregistered offerings the two executives from the blockchain credit partners company used the ethereum blockchain to sell cryptocurrencies to investors while misleading them about the company's profitability so 
Full and honest disclosure remains the con cornerstone of our securities law, no matter what technologies are used to offer and sell those securities. That's what they're pretty much saying here. This allows investors to make informed decisions and prevents issuers from misleading the public about business operations. So yeah, pretty much they didn't tell people how they're gonna how they make their money. And little did people know when people put their money into Ethereum, they're really it's not really their Ethereum. It is the company's Ethereum and they're making money off it pretty much. So that's just to sum it up in a few words. But anyways, it's just more uh big executives of crypto exchanges under scrutiny but remember none of this financial advice i'm not a financial advisor i'm not saying buy or sell crypto i'm just telling you about the fud that's going on the fear uncertainty and doubt and fud isn't always false like this is true fud right here this is something that you should be scared of you should be scared of what the government is about to do and it's really uncertain like we don't know what's about to happen but anyways Let's read about this. UK Standard Chartered to offer crypto brokerage services in Ireland. Standard Chartered is a bank inside there, if you didn't know. British Bank Standard Chartered will offer cryptocurrency broker services in Ireland through its Zodia Custody subsidiary. The digital, the digital asset custodian will focus on signing up institutional investors in the Republic, which has become a European base for many financial institutions and crypto companies. So Standard Chartered to provide these crypto custodies but anyways that's pretty cool that they're doing this over here it says the crypto custodian platform was established late uh last year by the uk banks so they're out here making innovative moves and yeah they're they're doing a lot of stuff out there let's talk about the sec chairman though so he says that satoshi nakamoto's innovation is real crypto rules are clear so let's scroll down and see what he's talking about here so over here you can see this is what he said. It has, he says, it has been and could continue to be a catalyst for change in the fields of finance and money. That's what he's talking about with crypto. So it seems like he's really with crypto, but these regulations aren't with crypto. But anyway, Satoshi Nakamoto's innovation is real. SEC Chairman Greg Gensler talked about Bitcoin and crypto regulation last week at the Aspen Security Forum, where he outlined his plans to regulate the crypto space. He began by refer referencing the Bitcoin white paper. So over here, he says his innovation spurred the development of crypto assets and the underlying blockchain technology. Gensler said about Satoshi adding the crypto asset class has ballooned and is now worth $1.83 trillion. So he's just stating the obvious. But anyways, this it, he says over here are highly speculative stores of value. And he says that's why they're regulating it because it's highly speculative. But anyways, this this is just, I wouldn't say it's FUD. You know, he's he's kind of with it, but he's still trying to regulate it. Like he likes crypto, but he still wants to regulate it. So that's pretty much what's going on here. But remember, none of this financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But if you guys like the video, hit the like button, subscribe. It really helps out the channel for the YouTube algorithm. And if you like it, comment in the comment section what you liked about the video, what you hate about the video. And if you, you know, if you think that the regulation is good or bad, just leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think. And also check out the links in the description for free stock with Robinhood and Webull and public.com. And I'll be back with another video. Peace.